Hi, this is Kiwi G, and I'm back in the UK. Summer vacation is now over, and I had to come back to do my last year of my degree, which is going to be great. <laughs> Just need to keep telling myself that. I was really pleased to see the response and the comments and the messages I got from from the first from the most recent vlog that I posted about the first time doing a table at a convention because I think that that topic is quite important. I think some people need to know that there are times where you can have a really shit convention and sometimes that can be your very first one but don't feel discouraged to keep doing it because they're not always gonna be like that and you can only get better and even so, even the most experienced con goers will have a bad convention they will just never say it you know, even the most experienced people have like little like dips where they don't sell as much and uh, maybe their new designs aren't working out as well and um, you know, it is a bit discouraging but they still do it because that's kinda how life works and you just need to keep going because it's fun so at the end of that video, I asked um, if people were interested to for <laughs> if people were interested for me to talk about like tips and tricks for conventions. So I wanted to make the first video all about merchandising. So like what to sell, what to make, and how much you're gonna sell it for because those things those are like that's the biggest question I think some people have and they're like a little bit afraid of it. You know, what if what if I over like what if I overprice my things and no one wants to buy them? What if I make this not popular thing and no one wants to buy it? So alright. Uh, I have a few points to make, so let's just get started. Point number one, how big you wanna make it. As you can tell from the wall behind me, there are a variety of sizes that you can make your prints at, and there is no wrong answer. There's absolutely no wrong answer here. You can make them like the standard the standard bigger size I've seen. The very standard one is A3 or in like the photo photo paper size that's about 11 inches to 14 inches about there. Um, that that's the standard poster size that people always make it at which is which is like this one which is like um the, the free Iwatobi poster and um, just yeah just very standard normal size you can also make them at A4 sizes which is like my Dragon Age Inquisition companion set here um, this piece here by Destiny Blue and um, and you can even make it as like you know just postcard size you know A5 or I think the postcard size is about 4 inches to 6 inches 4, ti four times 6 inches which is like the high Q set that no that's wrong A5 sizes are about like these ones here you can even go way smaller than that make it A6 which is like those ones up here so as you can tell as someone who buys art from conventions there is absolutely no wrong size. You can even make it as cool as you want and make it custom size. Sizes, there is no wrong answer. You can make them any size that you want. Just whatever you feel comfortable with. So I started, myself, I started doing A4 sizes and uh, gradually moved on to A3. Point number two, paper. What sort of paper are you going to print it on? A lot of people think that this is a really big thing but you know like I'm gonna be honest it's it's not as huge a deal as um, as people think because no one's going to like what well, people well some people have their preferences some people like gloss some people like matte but I think as a generalized thing as long as the art is good no one's gonna really care if it's really shiny or it's really matte case in point halfway to the most recent con I had I ran out of gloss prints so I had to print some out at home by myself on my printer and those turned out to be matte prints and um, this was for my Haikyuu magazine set so I had half of them in gloss and half of them in matte and I asked people 
if that was a problem to them that they are mixed together as a set and they said no. So in a nutshell, what sort of paper you print on is not really that big of a deal. But I like to use silk and oyster paper, photo paper, because it's not too glossy and it's not too matte. It's a very nice mixture of the two. Silk is definitely my favorite one to use. I think glossy can be too shiny sometimes and kind of like blind you in like particular lights. So point number three, the amount to print. Now I started off doing a really, really stupid thing and printing out 20 to about 30 of each print design that I had at 72 DPI because I thought I was amazing and I was gonna sell them all. Don't do that. <laughs> So honestly, the standard amount for me at any con, for the last few cons, has always been 10 to 15. There has only been one incident where I printed more than that 10 to 15 gap bracket thing and that was with the Undertale print that I sold at the last con, which uh, if you saw my vlog about MCM May 2016, you would know that I sold out of that print. On the very first day, I sold all 15 copies of that print. I had none of those left and I had to go print out some more. I ended up selling 40 of those prints. People are so thirsty for sands. They, they, they need to calm down. They, they just need to calm down. But on that note, thank you to everyone who bought it. Cause that made me really happy that people like that design so much. It's always better to sell out then have like a thousand copies of a, of a print left over. I mean, you can always take those leftovers and sell them on another con, but maybe you don't want to. The biggest worry about how many to print is that what if you sell out halfway to the con? What I would do if I was ever in the position that I sold out halfway to the con and I was the last con, was that I invested some time trying to find out print shops in my area and and I would leave files of my prints with them and I would email them if I was close to selling out and say that I need some more printed within business hours of course. I need some more printed and could you do that for me really quickly. I'll come and pick it up in like an hour, two hours or so and um, it worked out pretty well. If anyone is, if anyone's going to MCM Comic Con I'm going to leave in the description a really good print store which helped me do my Undertale prints when I sold out on Friday and, and they got new ones printed, like 30 copies printed within the hour and they're just two minutes away from the Excel Center. They're called DCS Printing. Again, I'll leave the link in the description in case anyone wants to check them out. They are so, so nice. If you are a person that does multiple conventions in a year, unlike me that only does the two MCM ones a year, you you could invest in printing a little bit more, depending on maybe what deal your print store has. That, that always works out because, you know, convention season. Woo. Point number four, other merchandise, is it worth it? So generally the most um, abundant kind of merchandise at the Artist Alley at cons are prints. And, um, and sometimes people sell other things like um, notebooks, um, pins, badges, keychains, those bookmarks, those are like a lot of like different different kinds of merchandise you can have at con. Now, of course, printing those other ones and stickers, how can I forget stickers, but anyway. Printing those will always be a little bit more expensive than printing prints and here's the problem that some people like always think about is that those other types of merchandise will not bring you as much as a profit as 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 your prints because you know printing a piece of paper will cost you about well, about 50p and then you can sell it from in between five pounds to eight pounds and you know that's a huge profit margin there already but for a keychain especially acrylic keychains it can cost you about to three to five pounds to even print them out and boy that's not right it can cost you to about two pounds to print them out and then you gotta sell them for about five pounds to maybe ten I've seen acrylic keychains sell for ten pounds 
just to try to make a decent profit margin and um, that's always the risk that you have to take with selling other merchandises because they are more expensive to print and uh, you will get less money off them but sometimes that doesn't matter because if you have fun if you enjoy making those merchandises I know a few people who love making badges love 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 making double-sided keychains and I personally I really like making bookmarks and notebooks because I'm really good at making repeating patterns and um, that's the sort of gamble you need to take because in the end they probably will not sell as much or maybe if you're selling badges maybe you just sell nothing but badges and make not as much as a profit margin but in the end you gotta have fun with it so I mean just try doing what you want the one thing I will add though is that if you're starting out and you're not comfortable doing those sort of expensive merchandise don't do it don't force yourself it's okay you have time to 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 make new kinds of merchandise later and you can always you can always scout the scout the field you know like do a little test ones I myself did like a test run of Steven Universe double-sided keychains at my con and um, I did not print them in acrylic because I thought that might be a bit too expensive so what I did was I bought those you know like really typical souvenir so really cheap keychains and I cut out the art and I put it in there and I spent the entire day assembling about a hundred keychains by myself and they sold pretty well so I was pretty happy but like I but like I said you have time you have time to kind of like do little bits of tests here and there see what works see what works for you whatever you feel comfortable with because that is the most important thing whether you feel good about it point number four which I get sometimes which is about making prints for popular fandoms versus not popular fandoms now I'm a really really stubborn person and I always insist on making a full metal alchemist brotherhood print a full metal full metal alchemist print I insist on making a full metal alchemist print to sell every year because um I love Full Metal Alchemist. It is my favorite, but I will admit it does not sell as much as my other prints because the fandom's kind of dead. You know, like it's it's been over for about five years or so, and um, and um, it's it's definitely not an active sort of passion in people's lives. Although occasionally I will admit that there are few like never die Full Metal Alchemist fans that will come and buy the print, which is always nice. Really nice to meet you guys. So sometimes it might be really easy to think that you can make prints of only popular fandoms and just cash out but sometimes what happens is that well you're not the only person who's had that idea so I remember when Free Iwatobi Swim Club came out um, the entire convention was filled with nothing but full like I was about to say Full Metal Alchemist the whole convention was was filled with nothing but free Iwatobi Swim Club prints and um, that can be a bit suffocating to people who are walking around they're like is this the only thing that they have here like I'm, I'm trying to look for my favorite fandom it's not even here because everyone is drawing like um, topless guys in um, in swimsuits and shit and and um, <laughs> that, that, that can that itself can also be a problem don't be afraid to draw fandoms of ones that you really like because if you really like something, you spend a lot of time on it, your design might come out more refined and your and your composition, your ideas will come out a little bit more refined. That will always show to people. People can see when you're having fun with um with with what you're doing and when you're having fun with something, people will like it too. That's that's really how it works, you know? So you gotta have you gotta enjoy what you do because then when they ask you about it you can spend like five minutes of your time just talking about how much you love Haikyuu and like as an example because I love Haikyuu so much and um, and that will come across to people and then people will be like wow this person loves Haikyuu as much as me and like you know like that's awesome I, I think I, I got a bit carried away there so um, all in all always do something that you enjoy but 
Also, be a little bit careful. Just just think about it a little bit. Be a little bit smart about it. If the if the fandom for which I don't think will ever happen, but let me just use this as an example. If the fandom of Steven Universe was like really small, and um, not a lot of people buy it, don't make five different copies of that fandom because because I know I know you like it. Uh, but it might not work out, so that is a danger. So just just take it with um just just be a little bit careful about what you're doing. Point number six of this tip. <laughs> Point number six is pricing, which is always a really big thing. What would you price your merchandise at? Would you oversell? Will you undersell? That is always an issue, and I personally am still not the best at it. Something that I always think is important is to have a range of prices on your table because not everyone has the same budget as everyone else. So it's always really nice to have um, different different types of prices that fit for for different different types of people. So sometimes that works for when you have different types of merchandise like stickers. You can sell them as as your lowest sort of bar, and then prints will be your highest sort of bar. Or if you if you hand make things like necklaces or even plushies, that could be like your highest bar as well. But having a range is always good. It always makes people think like, um, oh hey, like I could I could get something still because some people don't have a lot of money when they go to con and when they leave without buying anything, they kind of feel a bit sad. So um, if you are one of those people that only sells prints and you don't you don't really have much of a range to go for with. Um, because you don't have other merchandise to sell. What you can do is sell them at different sizes. Some people like smaller size prints. That is the truth. Some people don't have a lot of space in their house. I'm running out of space personally. Some people don't have a lot of space in their house to put walls and walls of fan art everywhere. And um, sometimes having different size prints would work. Some people still ask me for smaller copies of prints that I have and sometimes I have to tell them No, I'm sorry, I don't have it in that size But then I, then last con I kind of compensated by making the Haikyuu magazine set that I had Which was all in A4 and it was all very small and neat and um, smaller than the A3 size prints And a lot of people like them, which is great So my standard pricing for my prints are Three pounds for A4 sizes and um, five pounds for A3 sizes. Uh, so five pounds for the slightly, five pounds for the bigger ones, three pounds for the smaller ones. This is the pricing that I have come up with by looking at how other people price their stuff at con. And this is a really big important point as well, looking at how other people price their stuff, because you don't want to be that sort of person who. Who charges 15 pounds for for a tree piece of paper and um, not I just realized how that sounds but and uh, I don't want to be like really mean because there are some people at my convention who actually do sell 15 pounds for 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 an a tree piece of paper and make a lot of money from it because their art was stunning but um, sometimes your art might not be that cryingly beautiful that's not an adjective but I said it anyway it might not be as beautiful as that person and maybe you're not as confident to sell that many prints that I mean sell your prints for that high amount of money maybe and um, and so that's why it's also important to take some time look at how other people price their stuff and then price use that to price your own things because then, then it's fair, then everyone has like that same sort of standard and no one gets mad and no one gets um, no one gets like really iffy about that whole situation. Uh, so deals as well are always a good thing. So if you have like multiple prints from the same fandom, you can be all Steven Universe prints from one package. Or if you, you know, if you had what I had, which was a set of A4 prints for, for the fandom Haikyuu, I could be like, all those prints for a specific set of money save up to seven to ten pounds with it just just think about it because people like saving money the one point i would 
really like to make to people because this is a really iffy topic. A lot of people have different opinions on this sort of thing, which is Sunday sales, right? So, you know, typically people think on Sunday that everyone starts slashing their prices and like, um, and selling things for cheaper and so they wait till Sunday to buy something. This is partially true. There are some people who like slash their prices on Sunday because they want to get all that all that extra stuff out. They don't want to carry it all. They just want to they just want to sell as much so they don't have as much to take back. But then there's also the danger that if you were someone who who goes to various conventions and um, and people see you a lot and then they they buy your prints at full price on Saturday or Friday but then come back on Sunday and see that you you're selling what they just bought yesterday for half the price sometimes that that can really piss people off and so sometimes it might not be the best way to do that what I think is that if you are a repeating artist if you go to that convention a lot slashing your prices on Sunday may not be the best idea. So be a bit careful with your deals. Don't make people too angry. That's a little bit hard to judge when you're when you're just trying when you get in the zone and you just try you want to try and make as much money as you possibly can. Just be a bit careful. Um it, it really does all work out in the end. Not yeah. <laughs> the last point I wanna make is something that that I think about quite a lot when I'm making my merchandise which is how many designs are you going to have for one fandom so there are people who specialize in one fandom only like the My Little Pony artists and their entire table is filled with different different types of My Little Pony designs me personally I like to have a range of different fandoms on one table um, but here's the thing that pops up occasionally, not all the time. When you have a group picture of um, when you make a design of a group picture of all the characters in one picture like this, like this haiku drawing right here. If you make one design like that and then you have another design of just a single character, a lot of people seem to think that buying the group picture will save you money because all the characters you like are on one page and then your solo designs kind of get a bit left out and um, that sometimes is a bit sad because some solo pictures can be really great looking and, and the design and the composition of it could be really great but sometimes that does happen sometimes that happens and I'm also guilty of it myself buying group pictures of everyone instead of a, instead of a solo one because um, I want to save a bit of money so what I like to what I like to do personally is to make a lot of um like mini groups like maybe groups of three groups of two really don't let it stop you if uh, if you make a group picture and then a solo picture uh, there are gonna be some people who love your art so much they'll buy it all that might sound like a like a like a dream fairy tale somewhere but that does happen. Uh, there are people who just love your style and love what you do so much they'll just buy all of it But that is something entirely entirely up to you to do There really is no wrong way about it. It's just something that I I personally kind of picked up myself and um, And here's one nice thing about making like solo designs is that if People people do get a bit like you know if you, if you just love the thing that you that if you just love that fandom so much people people like like me will be inclined to buy all of it so I, I, I like making um solo things because um, it's kind of nice to have a theme and um, yeah but again it is it is your table you get to decide what kind of group or solo things that you want in the end it will all work out It'll all work out fine. <laughs> so I apologize. Okay, so I apologize if this shot is a little bit jarring because the positions have moved a little bit because I thought I had finished the vlog with everything covered, but then there was one thing that hit me, which is incredibly important, and I can't believe that I went through the entire video without talking about it, which is where to get things printed and where do you buy supplies. All right, I have a. I have found a list of things you can get prints, buttons, keychains, everything that you can think of made 
in a very useful list and I will include that list in the description. I cannot believe I forgot something that important because not a lot of people know where to get stuff printed. So I, I apologize if the video is in a different position than it was earlier but that is important and I needed to, to mention that. I'm so sorry. So I think I covered all the major questions of this topic in this video. If there is a question that I that you have that I did not cover, please leave a comment. Send me ask about it on Tumblr. Just bother me about it. I, I like being bothered. I like answering your questions about this thing. Conventions are just something I'm really passionate about. So just just ask me any question. And um, I think I'm going to make the next video about table displays and what to bring to conventions. If that is something that is interesting and you want to know about, just tell me about it and I'll get to work on that as soon as I can. So um, thank you everyone for watching. I hope this was informative and uh, it made you feel a little bit more calm about doing conventions because once again, I really really enjoy it. I think it's something everyone should try because conventions are just a really positive place for nice artist friends that you make and become friends forever. So again, thanks for watching and uh, <laughs> bye.